Hey, welcome back once again to Jack's Tech Corner and another Photoshop Elements 11 video tutorial. Now in this video today, we are going to do what we are going to call selective coloring. And I'm going to use a wedding picture here because most of you know that I am a wedding and a senior portrait photographer. So we're going to go ahead and edit this wedding picture and do something to make it a little bit more unique so that your client might purchase an extra copy of this picture. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to do either a command or a control J. We're going to duplicate the background layer. And what we're going to do now is click on that layer one and I'm going to rename this layer and we're going to rename it to BW for black and white. And we're going to click OK. Now once we have that done, what we're going to do is we're going to go up to uh, Enhance and convert this picture to a black and white photo. And there we go. Now we do get this box that comes up right here. And what this box will allow you to do, instead of making just a black and white picture, and a lot of people don't, or a lot of people want to teach you to do this by just desaturating the picture. But to me, you get a very flat and unflattering black and white picture. If there can be such a thing, but there is, because you can get the, you can lose the luster out of the picture because all the tones actually start pulling themselves together. And what you end up having is one of those very shallow looking black and white photos. Here we can adjust the intensity because in every picture there is a color variation of red, green, blue, and then some contrast. This is the before and this is the after picture. We also have some styles down here we can select from. I tend to just play with the contrast more than anything just to bring it up and down and take a look at my picture and see what I'm getting. If you pull this box to the right it's even easier to see the picture here than it is up here on the top. Pull the contrast there a little bit more and you can see how the contrast will change. All right, and that looks pretty good. So we're gonna leave it right there. This is very much of a personal taste thing. So you can see right now we're at a plus 27, but your picture may be off a little bit more, a little bit less. Let's click OK. Now that we have that done, what we're gonna do now is bring into this BW uh, layer here or a black and white layer we are going to bring in a layer mask. One of my favorite tools ever since Photoshop Elements 9 has been the layer mask. Let's go up here and click on the layer mask tool. And here is the layer mask right here. Now we are gonna leave the layer mask white because what we're gonna be revealing is what's underneath of it on this background layer. That's why you want the background layer under it and it's normal color. So if we uncheck this, now look, there's the colored picture. And that's the color picture below our actual uh, black and white layer. Let's turn that layer back on. Click on your layer mask thumbnail. And we're going to grab a brush from our palette over here on the left. Under draw, you'll find your brush tool. And what you're going to paint with is black. So make sure your foreground color is black. And what we're going to bring out, we're going to make colored. We're going to color something. So we're going to color our flowers and bring them back in. That's why this call is called selective coloring. Now, I'm going to make my brush size a little bit bigger. And I'm doing that with my right bracket key on my keyboard. And if you don't know what your bracket keys are, your right and left bracket key looks like little half squares. And we're going to bring that up a little bit. Now I'm going to do is just use my mouse and we're just going to start painting over this with my brush. And we're just going to bring the color back in her flowers. Now, on the edges here, I would suggest on the edges to lower your brush size down a little bit. And we're going to bring this color back out in these flowers. So I am enhanced doing some selecting coloring. We're not using a selection tool, but I am deciding what to color and bring back into this picture. We're going to go right here. And actually, we used to do this by using select. And don't worry if you go over hand right now, because I'm going to show you how to fix that really, really easy. But we used to use a selection tool at one time to do this, but it's so much easier now with a mask. Uh, it's just, especially if you make a mistake. And I'm going to show you on her hand here. Because we did make a little mistake, so we're going to show you how to bring that back. 
And there you go. And again, for the brush size, I'm just simply tapping my right and left bracket keys and bringing these up and down on these sizes here to make it uh, work out for us. And again, it's just a really nice way to bring a touch of, uh, you know, something unique, I guess, to your picture. And I'm sure you've seen this in other photos. I'm not saying I'm the first person to ever create this, but it is something more to give to your clients. And we'll go back over this yellow stuff here and bring out the color here. It's like so. There you go. Now, what I was telling you about earlier is we can fix certain areas. And how we're going to fix those is right here on her hand is we're just going to simply select or hit our X key. And when you do that, watch the foreground and background color over here on the left. Uh, you can see it under color. If I hit that, it goes white to black to white to black to white. So if we want to hide a mistake that we did, we want to paint with white. So we'll come back over here, lower our brush size again, and we're just going to paint over this. Right there, and back over her fingernail to bring back the, uh, the, the, uh, the unsaturated or black and white one. And you can actually go in here and clean all this up, you know, get around her, uh, because you can see here where I made some of the mistakes in here and we can just clean all this back up here and uh, touch that up and take your time and uh, we can actually blow it up a little bit if you wanted to blow this up a little bit you can blow it up just by zooming in and then you can see you can get even closer in here and you can really look and see where your mistakes are and get in there and touch that up um, and again, before you show a client, really get in there and clean it up. Really make it nice. And uh, get this all cleaned up. Again, I'm going to use my X key. Because right here, you can see when we got a closer inspection, that I got a couple little branches there that didn't get colored. So we're going to bring those back out. Just like so. Right up in here. Bring that out. And right in here. So... And I always tell everybody, when you're doing these edits, when I teach these edits in a classroom, I always teach people to bring, uh, to zoom up what you're working on. And that's why, you know, in Photoshop, they have these tools, these zoom tools, these move tools, because it allows us to get closer inspection of our work and make it really that much uh, more finer and detailed. And that's exactly why they do this and uh, bring these tools up for us right there. And uh, these tools are great, great, great help. And it makes everything look really, really nice. Then we just go to View. And we're going to go to Fit on the Screen. You can see now that I got that cleaned up a little bit more. And now it looks even better. If you want to go and color something else, you're like, well, what else was colored here? All you got to do is uncheck this box again. And you can see, you can look around and say, okay, maybe I want to do that. Or maybe the flamingo or something. And turn it back on. Oops. I'm sorry, turn that top layer back on and then start painting. You would go over here and just start uh, painting out your flamingo. Of course, you want to bring your uh, brush back to black and start painting that flamingo again. So there you go. So folks, there you go. That is called selective coloring. I hope you've uh, enjoyed this little tutorial here with Photoshop Elements 11. It works extremely well. Uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, to do this edit you know it's not hard this is a very easy manageable edit to do and uh, something to uh, uh, something to give you to do I guess uh, on a Sunday maybe after you uh, because I always like to edit my uh, wedding photos you know the day after I shoot the wedding I I don't like to come home at 11 or 12 o'clock at night and start editing some photographers do that but I'm usually whipped by that time so I don't like to do that Okay, well, I hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial on Photoshop Elements 11. Uh, just a nice little selective coloring uh, edit here. And if you did and you're looking for more lessons, you're like, man, I'd like to learn more. This guy seems to know what he's talking about. Please check out my website, jackstechcorner.com, and you can pick up a DVD with all kind of edits on there. It's still the volume three volume set is still very pertinent. Uh, they're not all shot with Photoshop Elements 11. But all the edits are still very pertinent and they will work for you. So uh, pick a copy of that up. And a lot of people have been even picking up the uh, the latest one that I did was uh, Photoshop Elements 10 
um, on DVD. Uh, those video tutorials. And at the very least, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And when I post a new video, you will be notified. Thank you so much for watching these videos. And I hope you enjoyed this. And I hope you return soon. Take care. And until next time, keep your shutter clicking. Keep your editor editing. And I'll see you soon. Bye for now.